Hi, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech, and in this video I'm going to do a very brief introduction, call it review, of the transfer function. Now the motivation for this is not for any deep analysis of uh, Laplace domain quantities, but it's really just for being able to take differential equations, put them into a transfer function so that you can use it in a simulation, let's say in MATLAB or Simulink. Okay, so a couple key concepts. First off, the transfer function is an output variable over an input variable. And um, it's always in the Laplace domain. And we typically use capital notation. So if we have a variable, let's say, in the time domain, that's little x of t, when we convert it to the Laplace domain, um, it becomes a capital X of S. Um, some other notation issues um, will often go like this. We have, uh, we operate on x of t using L, and then we end up with capital X of S. We can go the other way with the inverse Laplace transform, and that operates on capital X of S and takes us to um, little x of t. Okay, now, you know, because it is in the Laplace domain, it is sort of a requirement that I at least describe what that is mathematically. So if you're given a function x of t, some time domain function, and you want to convert it into the uh, Laplace domain, all you have to do is this little integral. So you take your x of t, multiply it by e to the negative st, and integrate from 0 to infinity. And you integrate over t over time. So that converts this thing, x of t, into a function of s. The interesting thing about s is that s is complex. Okay? So it's a little bit different than uh, time, at least as we're accustomed to it. So now let's just do some operations with the Laplace transform. Um, I've already done this, that x of t via the Laplace transform becomes capital X of S from a notational standpoint. Here's some interesting things, though. dx dt, or x dot of t, becomes S times x of s minus x0, which is the initial condition associated with that state. x double dot of t, so the second derivative of x, becomes s squared x of s minus s x0 minus x dot 0. So now we have two initial conditions tacked on there. And we could keep going with this, right? So x triple dot of time becomes s cubed capital X of s minus s squared x0 minus s x dot minus x double dot. I think you see the pattern. The main thing I want to point out though is that derivatives in the time domain x triple dot just become uh, products multiplication by s raised to that same power, triple dot, s cubed, in the Laplace domain. That gives us a really great um, operation that we can do on differential equations. We can take differential equations and put them into the Laplace domain as algebraic equations. One last property um, of transfer functions is, and I'll abbreviate transfer function like this, xfr, fn transfer function. Tra if you're making a transfer function, you assume that all the initial condition, all the ICs, are zero. That simplifies dramatically these expressions, right? Because all those x of zero, x dot zero, etc. are all gone. 
And so you just end up with those things. Super simple to remember. Um, really, that's the gist of it, and we can just start doing some examples. Okay, so let's say we have this differential equation. And I'll be somewhat verbose for now and show that um, our functions x are functions of time. And this thing is forced with some sort of an input, call it f of t. And let's create a transfer function. So create the transfer function. Um, let's say x of s over the input f of s. The first step is just to put the whole thing into the Laplace domain. And that is super easy because the x double dot becomes s squared. The x dot becomes an s. that and we have this and now all I have to do is do a little bit of algebra and solve for capital X of s over f of s and I'll get 1 over ms squared plus bs plus k done that's it so there's a nice uh, pretty simple example of generating a transfer function from a differential equation. Now we can also go back the other way. So let me do an example of that. So let's say that we have a transfer function that looks like, oh, let's call it y of s over u of s. And it's 3s plus 1 over 2s cubed plus 7s plus 10. If I want to go back the other way, I just cross multiply. Like so. And I use what I know about how these s's map to time domain quantities. The 2s cubed times capital Y of S is going to be 2 Y triple dot plus 7 Y dot plus 10 Y equals 3 U dot plus U. So there's the differential equation that generated that transfer function. Let's see, maybe we should do one more example. Hmm. Let's see. Let me do this. One last example. We'll go uh, theta double dot. Now I'm going to start neglecting that um, verboseness where I put in the uh, function of time business. Uh, plus 3 theta dot of t minus 2 alpha t equals u of t and we'll have an alpha dot of t minus 7 theta t plus 5 alpha t equals 0. And our goal is to get the transfer function. Hmm, I have to make a capital alpha of t. Eh, let's do a theta, that'd be easier. So we'll go after the transfer function uh, like so. Well, again, really, you just go through the same steps. Put everything into the Laplace domain, s squared capital theta plus 3s capital theta minus 2 capital alpha, whatever that looks like, equals capital U. And then we have s capital alpha minus 7 capital theta plus 5 capital alpha equals 0. And now we have to do a little bit of uh, substitution. We can take this equation and solve for alpha. 
So alpha, I'll write it as s plus 5 equals 7 theta. Solve for alpha. And then substitute that back into here. And so we get s squared capital theta. I'm just rewriting that plus 3s capital theta minus 14 over s plus 5 capital theta equals u. Now I'm going to just slip down a little bit so I keep that one in, in view. I'm going to multiply this thing through by s plus 5. s squared s plus 5 times capital theta plus 3s s plus 5 capital theta minus 14 capital theta equals, running out of room, s plus 5 times capital U. I suppose that should be a capital. Multiply everything out and then finally solve for capital theta over U. So here we have an s cubed plus 5s squared plus a 3s squared plus 15s minus 14 all times capital theta equals, well, that same thing. And so capital theta over U is equal to s plus 5 over s cubed plus 5s squared Oops, 5 plus 3 is actually an 8, uh, plus 15s, minus 14. Done. There's my transfer function. Now, what's interesting is that if we wanted to get a single differential equation between theta and u, I could now do that by undoing this Laplace transform. For instance, I could go, oops, somehow I lost my thing there theta triple dot plus 8 theta double dot plus 15 theta dot minus 14 theta equals u dot plus 5u. Interesting. So I started with two couple differential equations up here. Boom, boom. And I put it into the Laplace domain, made a transfer function here and then took that back into um, a single differential equation in terms of theta triple dot and u. Okay, so that's it. Um, that's the end of this extremely brief introduction to Laplace transforms for transfer functions. Um, Again, the motivation was really for simulation, so that you could take a set of differential equations, get a transfer function, and then put it into something like MATLAB or Simulink. Um, went through a bunch of properties, and then a few examples. Uh, the last example was the one where we had a couple differential equations, which is probably the most interesting. Okay, so that's it. Uh, thanks again for watching, and again, this is Gordon Parker from Michigan Tech.